Tomorrow you may be dead. Hi, my name is Kumar and today I'll be presenting the people, the genius, and MMA, a mixed method analysis of how sports and theology influence various people in regards to mixed martial arts. So to start off, I'm going to list out the things that we'll be talking about. First, I'm going to do a bit of an intro, intro and a link to review. Second, I'll move on to the methodology. Third, I'll discuss results and along with the discussion. And fourth, I'll do a conclusion. So first off, the introduction, or where does this all start? Well, there are some key things that we need to first define. What is MMA? MMA is the one term that I'll be talking about a lot. So first things first, MMA stands for mixed martial arts. This means that it includes multiple disciplines. Disciplines are formal martial arts. They include karate, judo, um, Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you name it, they got it. It also dates back to the ancient Greek Olympics. Those things started in 648 BCE, as sourced by UFC themselves, which I'll also be mentioning later on. It is also a controversial sport, but more on that in a little bit. Let's hop into literature review. So for my literature review, I section this off into three spots. First one is sports sociology, something that I will also be talking about very heavily. Second is combat sports and MMA. Third is discussions and debates. So from there, I created a small table for you guys. Sports sociology is the science of how sports and society interact. So there are five main factors found by Washington and Kerry, and they studied them in 2001. Those factors are social class, gender, race, ethnicity, media, and globalization. Combat sports and MMA, well, MMA promotes physical and emotional health in regard to five factors, and that's why I chose MMA and not just any other sport, say like hockey, football, or tennis. Two of these largest organizations are UFC in the West and one championship in the East. I chose large organizations because I wanted a good data set. So if a lot of people are watching it, it stands to reason that there's a lot of data. And then discussions and debates, there is a great divide in the importance of whether or not these factors are important at all or not at all. And the goal should be understanding what factors matter more. This was brought up by X Dean, and although he challenged the idea of certain, if, whether or not certain factors matter more, he primarily focused on, well, along with his partners, he primarily focused on if these factors matter at all or not. So this led me to my research gap, and I took a page off of his book, questioning are there factors that matter more? And if so, can I find that in real time while bridging different scopes? Now, I'll quickly go back to this. Washington and Kerry are the reasons why I decided to include fellow scopes. So these five factors can be um, sectioned off into micro and macro. So micro would be small things like social class in one specific area, say this school, for example. Whereas it could also be the macro social class in the entire United States or the entire world. So that's why I decided to stress for different scopes as well, just to make sure that I hit all the points and all the gaps. So that led me to my research question, what factors contribute to people's opinions on mixed martial arts? So from there, I created a methodology. As I mentioned previously, my methodology was mixed, so that means there were two different methods. My first one was experimental, my second one was trend, and from there, I interpreted what each one meant for my research question. So starting off with my experimental plan, I used teachers from my school, Creek County High School, and invited them up as participants. They were divided up based on their general studies. So if they studied Algebra 1, for example, or Calculus, they would go into math. If they taught reading or literature, they would go into reading and different things vice versa. So from there, I had them watch a fight that was chosen and then answer a questionnaire. At this point, that would just be qualitative data because it was based on their feelings and not actual numbers. So my justification to this was that it hit my gap statement of real-time feedback. I can see in real time how they acted by doing these in-person interviews and having them answer that questionnaire in person. The data type is qualitative, that's five-point Likert scale. This also helped me with my gap because it helped me understand how they really felt because they could put it down themselves rather than assigning it a hard number. And then three, like I've been mentioning, it does fill my gap. Four, sample, it, sample, it range, there's a huge range of teachers because there's multiple different disciplinaries that they teach and there's a decent amount of size as well. 
So for my trends, my trend will be Google Trends itself because it's easy and it's free to me, free for me to use. The steps were search for MMA along with the factors that I found from the experimental research were more important. And then study that graph for average search amount. Now it's important that I point out here that the average search amount was based on what they found. And if they weren't able to pull certain data from certain places or certain computers, it wasn't on there. And then I wanted to find possible correlation. And from that point on, this data would be quantitative. So my justification for that was that it was concrete evidence. These are numbers. These can't be disputed. What I found is what I found. It also rounds out the discussion by adding connections. If these things were connected, we could have a conclusive ending to my study. And then three, the globalization. Like I said, I pulled from the largest organizations. And the reason was because I wanted to pull from all over the world, which is why I chose one in the east and one in the west side of the world. And finally, like I said, it finalizes my research results and it makes it as accurate as possible and open to a closed as possible avenue. So for my experiment, so going back to that real quick, this is my first part. Like I said, I divided the country into three. I had them watch it twice and then answer questionnaires. So like I said, my participants were categorized into their main teachings. So here I have the total number of teachers. I had my participant goal number, which was around half the amount. And then the last column shows the actual participant numbers. Now, you guys might realize that physical education has zero. And that was actually um, due to time constraints and class constraints myself because I never had a PE teacher in my life. So getting into contact with them was kind of hard with all the commitments that I have because I'm an ROTC. Now I did combat that by trying to make up for it in other regards, like um, asking more people from different departments to hint certain things. But from there, gathering, I first sent out emails, which later realized that didn't work. So this did eventually change into in-person. And then from there, I did conduct in-person interviews. I also allowed them to do Google Meets if that helped them as well, taking account for time and scheduling conflicts. And all of this was recorded and then scripted, as well as the questionnaire responses as well were recorded. So for the interview, I asked them to answer section one of a questionnaire, which, were, which was a get to know you section. From there, they watched the video. There were six total videos, three from USC and three from one championship. Three were male and three were female. And I did this kind of to account for the factors and different biases and representations that might happen. And also no teacher from the same section or group had the same video. So if teacher one and was in math and they had video one, no other person who taught math could have video one. And then I had them answer section two and three of the questionnaire, which delve into the factors and ask different questions to gauge how they felt. And then once again, my factors were economics, ethnicity and race, gender, social media. And I added a little extra one wild cards where I allowed people to type in or tell me how they felt themselves, just to account for the fact that I wanted them to say how they truly felt because no research had done that before. So after I gathered all of this, the little get to know you section turned up into these little data points. So factors of my participants. From here, you can see that over majority of them were 18 to 29 years old, and ethnicity and race, most of them were white. Now, what I will say is previously, I had stated that the reason I chose this sample size was because I thought it had a good range. And in truth, while it was true that it had some range, it did have less range than I was hoping for. So some of my data from this point out could be skewed because of that. And then I also asked about gender. The majority were male. Experiences, I asked if they had ever watched a fight and if they had ever participated in MMA themselves. And while that didn't necessarily sway my data point one way or another, I just wanted to have that little bit of extra knowledge about my participants to truly understand why might they answer the way they answer. And then lastly, I asked them about activity, whether or not they were active, because it turns out that if you like something, you might be more interested in it. And that was one of the things I was focusing on, whether or not they were interested in it. And then from there, all of this being said, I wanted to remind you guys that this whole point is to just understand what factors contribute to people's opinions on MMA. So all that get to know you stuff, all the little details and planning and preparation, 
all of it was for to understand these people better so that I can understand the facets better. So then moving on to results. So this is the graph I pulled after um, going through and deciding how to code and interpret what I pulled from the questionnaire. So at the bottom, you'll notice that I have all the factors listed out and there are two lines. One line represents the high value, which is the red line, and one represents low value, which is the blue line. Now, since this is done on a Likert scale, the goal in mind is that the further apart the lines are, the more important they are. So this means that violence, economic, personal, and interest matter because they're further away from each other versus the other one. And it might look low in number scales because it's only one through five, but when you have only one through five, it really does matter. And also this right here is what I consider my meat and potatoes of why I chose trend analysis. This is where I allowed my wild card to reign free and I asked the people, what do you think would influence your opinion? This is something that all the previous research, Epstein, Washington, Kerr, um, and Erzamba, failed to do previously. They failed to ask people what they feel. And areas of note, interest and values are high, which means that people really do feel like their own interests and their own feelings about the sport matter. And then along with violence and economics, following at a second close. And then from there, I moved on to my trends where I put all of this data points into Google Trends and tried to just see how the average search amount correlated to each factor in MMA. And this is what I pulled. Now, from here, if you're looking for average, you might realize that all these are pretty average around 50, except for SNC and race. However, there was a key thing that I didn't take into account from when I was researching, and that was that Google Trends and I can't tell whether people were researching these terms because they were related to each other or just because something happened in the week and day and maybe this was important at that time. So therefore, this is inconclusive. I can't tell whether or not they were researching these things because they're related to each other or because something happened or because that one person is interested. I just simply can't tell. So with all of that, what does this mean? Well, starting from my first graph, this would mean that violence, economics, personal, and interest matter. That would also mean that because this is inclusive, I can't really tell what's going on, except for there might be a limitation in participant size, resources, and time. So, Participant size, like I mentioned, I wasn't able to reach out to PE teachers. I also wasn't able to reach out to the total goal either. I only was able to reach out to half of them. Resources, like I mentioned, the usability of terms and whether or not those terms are related, I couldn't test for that either. And the time, um, I created a three month plan after this, but if I had three months more, I probably would have used it to spend more time on trying to find something else to finish the correlated analysis and round it out better. But really what that means is for my experimental, it's conclusive. It really was, I found factors that mattered more. And those factors were violence, economics, personal interest. Trend was inconclusive though because I couldn't correlate anything. So really there are two conclusions. One, we can conclude that maybe the results were skewed by the small population, or two, maybe there really was something behind that and there's a new avenue to take. But here's where I go back to this graph. Because although the population was small and although it was conclusive and inconclusive, this part doesn't lie. This is what people have failed to do throughout the entire research that I have found time and time again. They have never once really asked the people what they really feel. And to see that interest in values is so extremely high, to see that violence and economics is so extremely high, and even this bottom one right here that I haven't talked about, but I will now, MMA is an amazing sport, and then it continues to go on to say that I love. That could also be classified as interest in value. They're interested in MMA. They love MMA. That's something that they don't talk about in the research. 
So going back to my gap, since no one has studied which factors matter in real time while bridging each boat, I did. And my conclusion is that certain factors matter for now. And the reason I say for now isn't because things stopped me from making a conclusion. No, I have a conclusion. Violence, personal values, and economics. However, my scope was small, but to that point, I think that researchers should continue down this avenue because my answer is there are factors that matter and sway people's opinion on MMA. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, what was one obstacle or challenge that you encountered while implementing your research method and how did you address it? Um, so one challenge was starting off the trend um, analysis because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use. There are certain things and data points that businesses can use that I wouldn't have access to because mm -hmm. I'm not in the business, which is why when I originally chose UFC and um, one championship, I was hoping to pull directly from their sources, but realizing that that would be too difficult and I don't have to get into contact with higher up people, I decided to go for Google Trends because it was available at the time for me and it was as accurate as possible. All right, excellent. All right. What might be the real world implications or consequences related to your findings? So, if it's true that certain factors matter more, um, just drawing back to the fact that this is sports sociology we're talking about, not just MMA, it matters on a larger scale because that means that these factors matter for different sports and also possibly differently as well, which means that we need to go back to all the sports and we need to look at how each individual factor is reacting to each individual sport because sports really do influence and clearly interest people and in the way that we see and appreciate them. Think about the initial curiosity that led to your inquiry. What other areas of inquiry might the same curiosity lead to? Um, so my initial curiosity was me personally, I love MMA as well. And going forth, not just with MMA, but also just sports in general, what could they do for us? What could they do to drive the economy? Um, earlier in the literature review, one of the literature um, reviews even mentioned Eckstein actually, him and his peers mentioned that sports drives our economy. There's never been something that governments have invested in so wholeheartedly other than sports or their own funding, but sports really do drive our economy. All right. Thank you so much, Kamora. Very well done.